Now, the other thing, or another thing I should say really, about you guys using the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tool is, when you're working with a photograph and you start using the clone stamp tool uh, and you start you know, doing backgrounds or something like that, have you guys noticed something that happens when you, you start getting in blending, lower opacity, softer edge brushes? What happens to, to, to the photograph? Anyone? Can you see? It's hard for you to see up on the, up on the screen here, but you guys who are close to my monitor, you can see it. Here's, here's the original, here's the cloned area here. Here's the original area here near her lip. Do you see a difference between the two? Yeah. Yeah, what's the difference? It's darker. Okay, what else? It's less pixely. It's less pixely. It's smoother. When you start working with the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool and stuff like that, if you use a sharp edged brush, you'll get all those, the grain and the pixel, you know, the grain basically that's in the, um, in the image. It's not really grain, it's noise, but we'll call it grain. You'll get that graininess in the image. But once you start needing to blend things, okay, and get rid of the blotchiness, that also gets rid of some of the details. So what you'll see is, you'll see a smooth area like here, and then you'll see the, 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 uh, the grain that's evident right here near her lip. And I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see that up on the projector. So there's a real simple solution for this. And I've seen some of you are doing some, uh, some photographs where that change is really obvious, okay? Where it's like, oh, you've clone stamped that section because you got a little grain and noise in the image and all of a sudden there's this whole section in the corner, it's just smooth right? We don't want to do that. We want to have it so that people don't know that you edited the, the photograph, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add some grain back in. And there's a simple way of doing it. Once you get your clone stamping done and you've done it well, you're going to take your original and you can see here I've named it background fix no grain, okay? So now I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it. So there I duplicate the layer and this time I'm going to type in with grain, okay, nice and big. I'm going to take my no grain layer and I'm going to lock it and then I'm going to turn it off. So it's not there anymore. I'm just going to keep it as a backup in case I screw this up. That's really important. You spend all that time cloning. Don't mess it up and then save by accident, come back tomorrow, realize you did too much grain or not enough or whatever and now you have to go back and re-clone stamp everything, okay? Make a duplicate. It's much safer that way. We've got the drive space. We've got memory in these computers. These computers are really fast. We don't have to worry about anything that would preclude you from doing this. So now I've got my with grain layer here. I'm going to select that. And it's actually really simple. It's right up here under the filter menu, okay? There's a noise filter. Now, some of you may say, filters, filters, oh, you didn't teach us about those, Mr. Weisberg. No, and I'm not going to teach you a lot of filter stuff for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, well, actually, and the, and the biggest reason is filters basically do the same thing every time. They have options. You can kind of play with them. But if you use a twirl filter, I can look at your image and go, oh, you, looked at, you, used, a you used a twirl filter. And any five-year-old can use a twirl filter. Right? I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. So I want you guys to, to be a little bit, you know, I, I'm expecting more from you, let's put it that way, than filters. But there are some filters that become quite handy. And the add noise one, in this case, is going to be one of those. So I'm going to select add noise, and it's going to open up this uh, thing. And you can kind of click around until you see a preview of what you've got. <coughs> and, um, Oh, it's got the last amount that I set in there, which is 1.5, but it usually comes in around 12 or something, and you can kind of see what it does to the image. It adds, it makes it really kind of noisy. Huh. Um, it also comes in with like fake colors and stuff, you know, monochromatic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the monochromatic button right there, and what that basically does is it doesn't add in any extra colors. There may be times you want extra colors in there with the grain, Probably not, but maybe. 
Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start sliding the slider. And <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to get right in on a spot where I can compare the old versus the new. So I can really look at the grain here from the original versus the grain on my stamped, my clone stamp layer. And so I'm just going to change this slider. I mean, you can go crazy with it, obviously. We don't want to do that. Um, it gets hard to actually make a decent difference around four <clears throat> or so. It goes in jumps, like from four to two. So it's hard to kind of do anything in the middle. So you might actually have to um, go in and type 3.5 just to see what it looks like. The other thing is I like uniform versus Gaussian for a lot of this. Um, <clears throat> let me just pump this up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And the reason for that is Gaussian seems to be a little bit more uh, high contrast. You see the difference there? Okay. Uh, and, you know, usually we want this to be a subtle effect. We don't want it to, to stand out too much. So <clears throat> I'm going to go back down to around three. That was starting to look pretty good. And, and my, again, my goal is to match it with the, the section that's not done. And, and I can sit there and, and turn it on or off to really see what's happening. And you look right here especially, um, and you, you can see it kind of come in and come out there. That's really good. So 2.45 is actually looking really good. I'll, I'll experiment a little bit. I might go up to 2.75 and see if I like that. That probably is a little much and maybe go down to 2.0 and see what that's like. Nah, I like 2.5, 2.45 is looking really good. And so once I think I've got it, I'm gonna click OK. And then I can kind of look around and see how it looks in the entire bottom section that I cloned out. And now if you do that right, all that smoothness and that artifact that you created by doing the clone stamp tool, that's all gone away. Nobody will be able to tell if you did it right, that you removed an object or, or, or changed the background in any way, shape, or form. Okay, because now you're, you're starting, what you're doing is, your original photograph was theoretically imperfect. It had grain in it. It's going to. So if you then smooth it out really nicely in another area, you've removed that imperfection. We have to add that imperfection back in so that, it, again, it looks like it, it, a regular photograph. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? Okay, that's that.